This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Helen Fletcher talks about her progress in the development of a vaccine against tuberculosis. Hello Helen. Hi Anna. The Jenner Institute has recently developed a vaccine to enhance the efficacy of the BCG vaccine. Can you update us on your trial in South Africa? Well this is a really exciting time for us because at the end of 2012 we'll know for the first time whether our MV85A vaccine will actually protect infants from TB or not. The design of the trial is what we call a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. So half the infants received our MV85A vaccine and half of the infants received a placebo. And neither the mother or the nurse who gave the vaccine or the doctor who will be diagnosing any children who develop TB know whether the infants had the placebo or MV85A. So what this means is that all of us, until the trial are, is unblinded um, in December this year, um, have no idea whether we're seeing any protection or not. Um, it's the safest way to do a trial. It means that we can't influence what the results are, um, but also nerve-wracking for us after 10 years of developing this vaccine. You know, it really is both exciting and, and nerve-wracking, and we'll see what happens. We know about the links between TB and HIV. Are there links between TB and malaria? There aren't links between TB and malaria in the very direct way that you see links between TB and HIV. Um, TB is a disease that very much affects HIV patients and um, is the biggest killer in that population. Um, TB tends to affect adults, young adults, whereas malaria affects children under the age of five. But where there is a link is in the type of immune response that's needed for protection from disease. Both of these pathogens hide within human cells and so you need a cellular immune response to be able to sort of gain access to where the pathogen is hiding and clear it from our bodies. So in that way there's very much a link and when we're thinking about designing vaccines it means that the vaccines that we're designing are actually quite similar for the two diseases and so um, in our institute for example in the Jenner Institute we work um, side by side developing vaccines for the two diseases so we can share the same technology and learn from each other's approaches. What are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? Ten years ago there were thousands of TB vaccines that had been developed in the laboratory but no vaccines were in clinical trials. Over the last five to ten years we've seen a handful of TB vaccines actually go from the bench and into humans for the first time and that's been a huge step forward for the field. Um, and it's something that um, is very much a focus of our research here in Oxford. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, having a handful of TB vaccines into clinical trials out of the thousands of potential candidates just isn't enough. This is a very complex disease. Um, two million people die each year of tuberculosis. A third of the world's population is infected. We know that a vaccine is the most effective tool for tackling um, infectious diseases worldwide. So we need to get more of those back vaccines from the bench through into the clinic. And we also need to use the best science um, to really focus in and understand from these clinical trials what makes a good vaccine, what is not so good, so that we can keep improving and uh, move forward. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? In the Jenner Institute, we design vaccines in the laboratory, we do early testing in vitro, and then we actually take them forward into human trials. And for me, that is translational medicine. You're starting, you're in the laboratory and going right through and seeing something into humans for the first time. And then, for example, with our MV85A trial, all the way to see whether you actually get efficacy or not. And so um, here, this is 
the best example, I think, of translational medicine. If you take a drug, you can see very early on in patients whether you're having an effect or not and then a company can choose to develop that drug or not. Whereas with a vaccine, you're committed, you're going the whole way. And so starting off at the bench, right through the clinic and as a researcher, and being able to see that whole process is incredibly rewarding. Thank you, Helen.